Uh, we'll talk a little bit about policies in Europe, down removal Europe movement, and from sea to shore guidance. But before starting, I would like to very quickly introduce where I come from, from Wolfish Migration Foundation. This is our team. And uh, we work in several projects all related with uh, longitudinal connectivity recovery on uh, creating awareness, dissemination, uh, creating net new networks. And uh, one of our uh, projects, the, the first one we started uh, working on, it was Wolfish Migration Day. I think some of you know about it. We started in 2014, the first one. Uh, we, uh, we managed to uh, reach 273 events worldwide. It, we celebrate it every two years. So in 2016, we did uh, we we reached 450 events, and uh, this year in 2018, we reached 570 events in 63 countries. This day is to um, reach people uh, to create awareness about the need of free flowing rivers and, and when it's not possible. What are the solutions? And uh, thanks to all the people that participate, many kind of organizations, from museums to angling associations, schools, universities, research centers, government, I mean a lot, theaters, uh, shops, uh, many people that love and likes uh, rivers, free flowing rivers, and know a little bit about it, likes to share. So uh, you can, if you are interested, please contact us for the next Wolfish Migration Day in 2020. So that's one of the things we, we work in. Also, uh, in Amber, uh, which Piotr Parasiewicz will talk tomorrow. We, uh, uh, we do several things in this project, in this Horizon 2020 project. But one of the things we work on is the collection of all the existing uh, inventories of, uh, of uh, barriers in, Euro in uh, rivers in Europe, in Europe as continent, 20, uh, 33 countries. So that's one of the, our tasks in this moment in Amber. And Dam Removal Europe, well, it all started like four years ago uh, when I met Herman in the uh, United States in Fist Passage Conference. And um, I was taking a dam removal course there, and I was just amazed of so much have been done in USA, and I didn't know anything about Europe. I didn't know anything what was going on, if we have started something or not. And Herman was really interested too in starting something, so we uh, started uh, collecting information, and we found out, I had no idea, in this moment there are uh, 95,000 uh, barriers in France, and out of uh, which 70,000 are dams and bridges. They have an amazing um, uh, database. So we found, we s I, had, I have never heard these numbers. I've always heard that Spain has 1,200 big uh, dams. Uh, Europe has over 7,000 big dams, but always about the big dams, not all the barriers. So we start uh, looking and searching, and then we found uh, the Swedish database, which is really, really, really good too, with over 10,000 uh, man-made obstacles and also uh, England and Wales, over 20, uh, 22,000. And uh, Spain, we found, we collected the database, and it's uh, over 21,000, but then we found all these countries, like Spain, which are still working on it, and the uh, databases are not as complete as, as the French one and the Swedish one. So I actually estimate that Spain has over 50,000 barriers. So when we saw all this, uh, I have never really seen uh, anywhere, I've never read anything about this, you know, about the uh, inventories, the all the barriers in our rivers. There was nothing published. And even more shocking for us wa was to find out that we have been already removing dams in, in, uh, in Europe. Uh, France was the, uh, the leading one with uh, over 2,400 barriers removed. This is one of the most uh, iconic uh, removals in uh, 19... 1996, they started and they finished in 1998. Uh, historical dam was built in 1895. So, and not only that, they have removed uh, more than the United States together, but also they were already planning on the removal on th of the biggest uh, dam in Europe, which uh, I think it will be explained to today, sorry, <coughs> today, uh, the scene. And we, we actually, our team uh, visited last week we were there like cheerleaders, you know, trying to cheer up the team and the tracks. And like we were like fans last week. <laughs> they were like, "What the hell are these people doing here?" But it was they were it was it was really amazing that we are 
doing this in Europe and, 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 and nobody knows. So, so then we kept searching and we saw all the work done in Sweden, in Finland also. Uh, actually, I was told that these, the, their inventories are not updated at all. They think that it's twice as number that the barriers that they have removed and so on and on. And UK, Spain, which these four countries are the more active. So, oops. So, so then we thought, w why are removing so many dams on very years? And what's the driver? Who is paying for this? Who is managing managing uh, uh, these uh, water bodies? Uh, who is starting this? We had so many questions. So we started it, searching and, and, and looking for answers. And France was the, my first target because they had uh, removed so many barriers already. And then I asked the, the French people, well, who who manage uh, uh, f uh, rivers in France? And every everybody would keep telling me, everybody, everybody managed. I was like, coming from Spain, that, that, they, that didn't make any sense. You will understand why later. Later, and I was like, how everybody? So thanks to Corinne Ronot, who is from uh, European Rivers Network, uh, who is coming today too, she made this scheme for me and I was like, wow, it's really everybody. And uh, it's really complicated management. It works really well, but it's very complicated comparing with the Spanish one. You will uh, understand at the end why. But uh, it works really well. Everybody's really engaged. And uh, when you want to remove a dam, basically you have to go to the DDT, the departmental, uh, the the territory, the department, uh, something like that, the DDT. There are 103 departments uh, uh, that manage uh, in a local level uh, rivers. And then depending on how big is your project, then you have to go and move up and until uh, ask permission to the French Agency of Bi uh, Biodiversity, AFBB. And uh, basically it's the owner of the dam in France who has to pay for the demolition of a barrier. But they have a lot of uh, economical uh, grants. So uh, the municipalities, the, the national, the AFB, F, A, FB, sorry, also have grants and they can sometimes pay until 60 or up to 80% of the costs. So uh, it's and until 30 years ago, 30, 20 years ago, it was not mandatory for the dam owner to remove its dam. So once the dam owner would finish uh, using the dam, they could leave it there in the river. That's not like that anymore, which is great. Things are, are, are changing and improving in Sweden. Most of you know more than me in Sweden, but more or less to the ones that are from out of Sweden. Uh, I forgot, friends, uh, fr sorry, I, friends, um, most of the rivers are private except the, the waterways, what they call the waterways, the, the big rivers. Those are public, but most of them are private. Say in Sweden, all of them, I, uh, I learned, everything is, is private. And uh, they have, uh, they have uh, different um, um, inst institutes or organizations who um, deal with, uh, with the management, but it's the river owner who uh, has to pay uh, for the, for the demolish demolishment of, of the dam. But you, you here in Sweden, they have different grants and funds to help that uh, happening. From That comes from NGOs, municipalities, the national government. And I've heard, that's what I want to learn in this trip more about it, I've heard that there is a fund that was uh, uh, created and accepted this year, I think, where money comes, uh, it's collected, comes from the hydropowers, and, and that will be used for river restoration, but that's something I have to uh, keep learning in this trip. So that's really, really interesting. I, I, I haven't, I haven't uh, found any any f uh, grant coming from hydropower like like that one, yet. Uh, in Finland, in Finland, they have 15 uh, different uh, well rivers and lakes are mostly private. Sorry, starting from there, and the drivers why they want to remove. Uh, dams is basically because they want to uh, recover fisheries, uh, angling, uh, fisheries and angling uh, um, uh, economy. And uh, who manage the, the rivers there? The, EL, the ELY centers uh, are the ones, there are 15 in Finland, and, and they are the ones basically um, managing rivers, but is the river owner, uh, the hydropower or whatever, 
who manage their own uh, reach of the section of the river. But when you want to remove a dam, or you want to do something in the river that has, has it will have an impact on, on the private land or, or public land, you have to ask for permission to ELY. And then uh, it's funny because I asked them, do they, ha do they have a, a cost you know, to do these authorizations? And they say, well, the opinion, they told me this several times, the opinion doesn't cost, but the permits and papers cost money. So they do have to pay uh, money for, for, all the, for all the way to, uh, to uh, remove dams and all the permits. And uh, who pays for the removals in Finland? Well, until a few years ago, it was uh, the state uh, money, money com coming from the ELY, so from taxes, but not anymore. They decided that uh, from now on, it's the stakeholder or the promoter of the of the um, that removal who pay who will pay for for the project. And for now, uh, I, I didn't find any grant or any help uh, directly for these for these projects in Finland. In UK, in UK, uh, almost all the almost all the rivers are private. And uh, the driver basically is the water framework directive. So I don't know what will happen in, in, a, in a year or two after that, but except Scotland. In Scotland, they are very highly interested in recovery, their, uh, their fishing and angling, because they have a strong economy uh, that, that, that comes from, from fishing interests, from, fish, from fishermen. So uh, they, are, they have a, a, a very good plan that I will talk in a, in a moment. So uh, they have different permits. It, it, it depends if you're in England, Wales, Scotland, or Northern Ireland. And who pays for it? Uh, most of the time, the owner. But you can get uh, funds and grants and help from uh, charities, NGOs, sometimes a municipality, a company. But Scotland has the only specific grant fund that I found uh, in Europe specific for river restoration. The government gives a quantity each year, around two million pounds, sometimes three. I don't know about this year. Uh, we, will, we will listen later, uh, our Scottish colleague. That, and that is used for uh, fish passage, river restoration, and dam removal. So uh, for now, this is the only uh, fund that I found, and I think it's really interesting, something that we can learn in other countries, because it's a great way to encourage people to remove their uh, useless uh, dams. And then in Spain is the most, uh, is the most different case that I, that I, I think in Europe. In, in these four cases, for, from the more, more most active countries on dam removal, you will see that they come from very different origins. In Spain, all rivers are public, all. And they're all managed uh, by a, um, an authority, one authority per river basin. So we have like 15 different uh, authorities. So if you want to do something in the river, anything, you have to always ask the, the co las confederaciones hidrográficas, the, the basin authorities. And uh, why are we removing dams in Spain? Basically because the water framework directive. But if you say this to some people in administration, they always say, well, we have we have our own law, which is before the water framework directive, and it's really good. Yes, it's magnificent, wonderful law. We, in our law, uh, the first mention of uh, having to put fish waste goes up, uh, up to uh, 18, 1879, when they suggest that it was very important to put fish waste when you build a barrier in Salmonic rivers. And then it was updated a law in 1911 and then 1942, and it was all dam uh, owners were obliged to build a fishway if they wanted to build a fishway. So the, the law is great. And also, after the, life, uh, the, the, the lifespan, after the use of the dam, the owner of the dam had to take out the structure and leave the river as it was. So yes, we have a wonderful law, but guess what? It's like mission impossible to find a fishway in Spain. It's like winning the lottery, you know, if you find one. And, uh, and uh, nobody until now really is paying for the dam removals. All those dam removals, most of them are paid uh, by the, the Basin Authority. So my, what I learned from this is that, yes, we have a great law, but 
you need something else. It's not only about having a great text, you know, in a book. No, uh, we, we are really missing something. And, and I think thanks, in my opinion, thanks to being part of the European Union and having somebody really watch, it's helping us to really uh, put in reality our, our own law. So and we don't have any specific grants uh, to help removing, but as I told you, basically, all the, the removals uh, have been paid by the, water, the River Basin Authority, except a couple, which the company, the hydroelectric companies, are going to pay for it. So uh, these are some of the ex uh, great examples in Spain. Uh, the upper uh, dam is the biggest uh, remove for now in Spain, 20 in, in Europe, sorry, 23 meters high. That was removed in, in 2014. And uh, and this is another one that it's really, really great, this 10 meters high. So we, we have really, really good examples. This was another one that was uh, uh, demolished in the, in the during Wolfish Migration Day uh, last spring. Uh, the Yecla de Yeltes Dam was the second biggest uh, dam removal. It's 21 uh, meters high uh, with a uh, gate structure, uh, including the, great, uh, the uh, gate structure. So um, we have great ex Thank you. We have really great examples, uh, not only in Spain, in in, in UK, as I told you, in uh, in uh, Sweden, in uh, France, and we are finding more and more in Estonia. We are finding Estonia has removed dams, and Denmark has removed a bunch, and we are trying to collate their database. But we found the same issue for all the practitioners. Um, sometimes the engineering part is not the most difficult part for them. Many times is the social part. So um, these are some pictures from uh, uh, USA, where sometimes there is a very strong uh, opposition to <laughs> tar removal. And as well, these guys always like to get naked when they want to celebrate or do something. And you, you can't really see it here. <laughs> and uh, y s these practitioners, you know, the sometimes the uh, engineers and, and people that wants to carry out a carry out a, a, a dam removal. Sometimes they 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 have a very hard time dealing with uh, with uh, citizens because they don't want to remove their dams. And look at the phrase down. Take a second to say goodbye to the lake. The mud hole you will see is sponsored by DNR, the administration. So people uh, people are really afraid of this. You know, uh, mud holes is this. They think the 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 river is gonna stay like that forever. That's what they are going to have after the dam removal. And also, there is a lot of people with sentimental links with the dams, you know, and the historical things and the aesthetics. So we have, this is an example in USA where people really were against this dam removal, I mean this dam, but uh, they didn't want to remove it because, you know, it was historic and the, the water falling, they liked the water falling. And so the solution was to remove part of it and then install a pipe that will bring water to keep the, waterfo the waterfall effect, you know? And then everybody was happy and the river is recovered. And nobody, well, they have to pay for maintenance in this case, but, uh, you know, you can always deal with them if this is what really what you want. You want to keep your damn histor your historical structure and the aesthetics. Well, you, you have uh, uh, solutions to you. So it's not only about we are going to remove all the structures. Sometimes you can deal with the people and 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 and, uh, and get a, a get a, and get a, um, oh, I don't know the word in English, I, and and get a, a um, yes. Thank you, thank you. So uh, so it works. It works if you have the time to talk and communicate to people uh, why we are doing this for and the solutions. Usually the 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 answer the response is really positive. And uh, and this is why we started the dam removal Europe because we we f we saw that there was so much done already in Europe and nobody knew about it. And the pe each time you would talk about dam removal, you know, everybody would freak out. And it's like a, a taboo thing. If you at least in the people I've met, you know, talking in administration, it, you know, it's something that you would have to whisper. Oh yes, we are going to remove blah blah blah. You know, it's like you because if not, people would get really. Uh, really afraid and this is this is one of our goals we have three main goals and this is one of the goals we want to achieve is first we want to refute wrong myths about dam removal 
We want people to understand why we are doing this, why it's positive, and it's why it's a great option. And uh, we want also to create a solid network, a solid community, because, al because uh, people are completely disconnected. They don't know what's being done in the province next to them or in the country uh, nearby them. And we can learn so much from other experience. And we have to share all this knowledge so we can actually do it even better. So uh, that's one thing. And another thing I think it's really important that we create a, a reference community. When journalists or people want to, to, uh, to ask questions about dam removal or experience, blah, 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 they don't know where to go. They just go to, I don't know, an ecologist that maybe is dealing with other stuff, but, but not dam removal. They don't know where. And so we are trying to put this community together so we have a reference for also to communicate to the press, to the journalists, and to the citizens. And, and, and the biggest, uh, sorry, and the last uh, goal is to put that removal in Brussels agenda. So how are we going to do this? Well, from going, going from the bottom to the top, uh, uh, to try and achieve putting that removal in Brussels agenda, we uh, created, as you have already, I think some of you have a copy. If not, you can download it for free on our website. Uh, a dam re uh, removal policy report that we launched this past June, where we facilitate, we, we put very summarized, we facilitate here the situation now, European rivers, which is very, very little known by the population. What are, uh, where is the dimension of the problem? How many dams we have? Uh, in the thanks to Amber, we estimated that we might have uh, around one million barriers in all Europe. So we we try to give uh, the vision of the of the dimension of the problem, and we try to explain all the benefits from from removing dams and why it's uh, why it's it's one of the best options when possible. It's not always possible, of course, technically, and we also give six examples, real examples, uh, where you can see the before and after data of how much it improved, not only in biodiversity and, uh, and environmental tacking, also about economic from the town. You know, you can really measure these things, how, how much economy, a, a regional and town and uh, a municipality economy gets better when removing a dam. Sometimes people think that when you remove a dam, all the, the activities are gone, there's nothing to do, but it's not, it's not that way at all. So it's really important to get uh, in, in well informed the politicians, stakeholders, and citizens that this is not, it's not the end, there's much more that can come. And for the second point, the network, we um, celebrate, we organize um, uh, workshops, international workshops every year and also in national levels too. And we started in 2016. And since then, right now we are over 700 people in, uh, in the network and that's getting bigger every week. We get more and more people interested, you know, people that are really carrying out uh, projects and removal projects, people that I wanna learn, uh, not only in Europe, also from outside. They contact us, you know, for more information, for references, for contacts and and for interested people, there's more and more interested people that they don't know where, where to go and where to learn more. So this uh, net network really is just about uh, communicating because the people and the interest is out there. And we are trying to put all our findings in our website. In our website, you can find uh, the atlas that we are trying, we are working on it, putting together all the dams that have been removed. Uh, now we are working in the French and uh, and the Danish database. You you can also read the news news real real cases studies and uh, newsletters that we send every two months with all the information we collect from from the community from people that are working on this. The references where you can find scientific papers, articles, books, and the policy report where you can download it. Real cases studies that we get from from people that are working on this. And but it's not only our website. You can also learn so much in in other in from other ways, like the Likin uh, um, group that we have, uh, the removal and fish passage network, and also 
we we'll try to disseminate and share the, uh, all, all our findings. Thanks, for example, to the book from C2 Source that you can download it for free. I think you got a, a copy. Um, but you can also download it for free. And I would like to say one little thing. The digital version is corrected, but in the printed version that I think you have, in page 208, there is a mistake, please. So if you could correct that, because it says uh, 14 uh, in the in the Y, X, in the Y says 14,000, 12,000, it's not 14,000, 12,000, there is one extra zero there. So you can actually print and paste this one in your book. But this is corrected in the digital version. So there is a lot of ways we are trying to reach as many people as possible and to help and support people that are working on that removal. And our Next wish, hopefully we, we make it, is a done removal guide for 2020, hopefully. Uh, we will be able to make it come true and uh, where we would like to explain step by step all the needs on a project for, for a, success, a successful uh, done removal project. So this is our next goal. And if you are uh, interested in done removal, please join us, contact us. Uh, and you can sign and be supported and sign our agreement letter. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we can uh, grow and grow and, and get bigger because the bigger we are, the more people listen to us and uh, the more impact we have. And the easier it is for us, for the ones that are working on that removal to work and, and make our work. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.